What's up, man? What's happening? You know what I can do. Hell oh, yeah. Yeah. What's <laughs> going on? Nothing. How are you? Good, man. Glad you can make it. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm about to sling some plaster. Come on in and watch your step. Did you ever see your right at it until all you could see was the brightest? Public radio. I hear it's all I listen to, man. Yeah. That's all I hear. Oh, it looks beautiful. Yeah. It's just, it's just like him. Like the cocoon. Yeah, exactly. So this is a polyurethane rubber mold. Uh, it's a flexible mold. And I'm about to start on the second part of the mold. Um, this is a two-part rubber. There's buckets and all that shit on the table or the kind of chemistry and the science behind mixing it up and painting on a mold. Um, you know, when you combine the two rubber types, uh, it's a one-to-one -one mixture, you paint it on and then it sets up and it becomes rubber. Um, there is a shim in here uh, that kind of has little registration keys just like I've made here in this clay and it'll be almost like a zipper to open and close the mold and it'll link up and line up. Therefore, the, the figure inside, once I remove the clay out of it, the, the empty mold will go back together the way it should so that when I cast a material back into the mold, it will look a lot like the original. There might be a fine seam, but that's, that's mm -hmm. nothing. Um, so now uh, I've got this, so it's spinning it around, but it's kind of mounted. Um, and uh, I'm going to throw a plaster on it. Um, the plaster part of the molding process is called a mother mold. The mother mold protects the memory of the flexible mold, which is the rubber. For the initial coat of the plaster, it's uh, called, called like a splash coat. And typically, or generally why you do that is the, the flick of the wet plaster on the rubber and on the clay um, covering everything kind of splashes away um, air bubbles. So you want that mate to be, you know, direct and kind of flawless over the rubber. Um, so I've got my dirty water mixed up. It's kind of a rusty and brown. I spit in it typically too, just for fun. <laughs> um, yeah, don't drink the studio water, rule number one. I've got PBR to offer instead. <laughs> I think I have some Sierra Nevada in there. I should say that I only have flying dog, oh, well, but not today. So okay. Sorry, flying dog. You can send a case to me, or a keg, and then uh, I'll, I'll have it. So this is... Um, USG number one, it's a uh, molding plaster, and it's just, you know, powder form. Um, it's uh, got my big popcorn scoop. And before I start showing off, I want to make sure I don't screw anything up. Make sure everything's in order. Um, so I think we're good to go. So I just kind of sip this in here. Sprinkling it around instead of building a pyramid. Get a nice even plaster. Bucket of plaster there. And now we flip it on here. So, and I've got kind of a uh, sheen of um, uh, petroleum jelly on it. And that will function as a. Uh, you might get flicked. Not by me, but just as a shrapnel. Um, it functions as a uh, kind of a mold release. They always put up a fight, but with a little lubrication, it'll be sure to come off. And so through this process, this is kind of where the uh, confusing part of the lost wax process begins. 
because right now we're making negative forms on a positive form. Um, once the mold is finished and I demold it, um, you know, its cavity will be negative and the original positive clay in here will be um, recycled. It'll be just, you know, uh, essentially destroyed. That's um, why making a mold is a very important thing um, because it's essentially the insurance policy of all the time I put on the clay. Um, if the mold you know, gets screwed up, um, you know, if the, the mixture of the rubber or something else happens and um, is a uh, uh, like for instance, I you know didn't mix the rubber correctly. You know it wasn't a one to one, but it was a 70-30 mix. It won't set up, and I'll have to try to clean it off or some other desperate measure, which will ultimately end in problem. But let's stop talking <laughs> about that. <laughs> I'm pretty good at this. I've been doing it for a long time. Um, so what got you in on this project? Is this something you volunteered for? They approached you? Uh, no, but I would have. I mean, yeah, of course I said I would love to immediately. Um, I uh, have kind of been involved with this for, I don't know, I think since shortly after probably Ron um, kind of initiated the entire idea. Um, a uh, personal friend and artist that was a part of their production team back then uh, named Russell Holsey recommended me to the committee. Um, and this is probably 2009 or probably something like that. Um, and, uh, you know, just kind of getting the ball rolling. And um, ever since then, uh, it's always been kind of something you know, in the back of all of our minds, um, there was not the um, effort that there is now, then. And of course, all good things come in time. And excitement for it. Yeah, I knew it'd come. I mean, it's one of those inevitable things, I think. Um, Dove into kind of all things Hunter and all things Gonzo. Um, you know, initially it was well, just kind of uh, how I work is kind of taking in as much as I possibly can. You know, learning as much as I possibly can about you know whatever the subject is, and um, then just kind of taking that through a number of mental filters, I guess. Um, typically don't sketch or anything when I'm working on uh, ideas. I mean, it's really just kind of a conceptual idea, and so, you know, lots of renderings and ideas are just all, you know, in mind, and um, you usually really don't sketch at all. Um, I mean, sometimes if it's like a uh, more of a kind of like a formal sculpture, I guess, um, like a stone carving, per se, I will, um, but, you know, Hunter is more of a conceptual piece for me, um, and so uh, it was just kind of understanding him as best as I could and um, learning about him, and then, um, you know, I, I thought that I didn't want to do um, something kind of um, you know, that really kind of, be, that would betray his legacy potentially, just something goofy. Um, you know, I'm not calling Hunter goofy, but, you know, I think he lived with that reality himself um, in his own life and, um, you know, as you recognize, kind of had to identify when and how with those demons as well. Or not demons, but just, you know, his kind of gone sort of nature. But essentially, like, the idea between, you know, him and Raul being invited to a university, it's like, okay, who do I think that they want to have? 
<laughs> what am I supposed to do when I get there? You know, fire hose the audience or something. Um, and uh, anyways, you know, whatever pertaining to that, I wanted to, uh, you know, really take this very seriously and take him very seriously um, as he should be taken and, um, you know, honor him um, in a very, you know, just and appropriate manner, uh, you know, something with something that uh, will kind of support and help, um, you know, focus his contribution to the world um, and not get really distracted with, you know, bats flying around or, uh, you know, drugs and all this other shit. Um, but, you know, I also kind of originally wanted to tap into that in a more critical way. So the sculpture started, um, you know, based on the Pitkin County Sheriff race, um, you know, when he was, you know, pretty young, um, our age, uh, I guess. And, and um, it was his concession speech, and he was wearing the wig, you know, like this here behind me. And, um, uh, you know, it's when he said, you know, the American dream really is fucked. And at that point, he also said, um, something along the lines of, you know, I know for sure now I'll never run for any sort of political office again, at least not in this way. Um, and, you know, it's really kind of that fork in the road for Hunter and his life, I think. Um, if he would have won that, of course, we'd still be talking about him, um, but in a very different way. Um, but that's just kind of such a critical moment to me, I thought. Uh, not just for us now, you know, looking back kind of historically, but also for him and, you know, what his future held after that. But it's also a really classic um, kind of composition of him as an artist and as a critical American thinker. Um, you know, American flag and a wig on his head, it's, uh, you know, it meant something more to me than just kind of a, uh, a masquerade or a comical sort of, uh, you know, expression of, you know, trickster figure isms or whatever. But, uh, and it was a, a critical thing. And so, you know, I carried that to, to this. Um, and so that was actually my first sketch. Of course, that's a photocopy of it. Um, but it was him kind of captured here. Of course, you know, from the waist down that you can't see in this picture, I dressed him up and, you know, uh, classic hunter regalia and you could see even in the sculpture I lost the socks um, lost the wig aviators on his face cigarette in his mouth um, all else are the same uh, the bullet shells you know they may or may not come back and those are the kind of details that will change between obviously this my initial drawing which came from this we already have this great evolution um, but it's, it's kind of, you know, I think all important and uh, points to the, you know, uh, kind of controversial and deep and complicated, you know, identity of, of Hunter. Uh, He's throwing one or two. Yeah. So one thing that art historians found that they kind of use as a an aha. So now we know he's right-handed versus left-handed. I am right-handed. So you can see the general scar is from top right to bottom left because of my slight sidearm. And I have taken out a number of playing cards. Hmm. 
Where do you want it? Let's see what we got here. Uh, you pin his wig to his head? <laughs> <laughs> He's nervous now. Yeah. This one I made out of a saw blade. It's pretty dull. Hopefully it sticks. If it doesn't, that's why. And my unisuit. Ah. Run in the other way by now. So mission accomplished. Like a bullseye. Uh, well, he's probably not too worried about his wig anymore. No, I'm gonna see the little blade. <laughs> There's a reason he chose firearms. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Although I don't think Hunter would be satisfied right now. He'd be looking for a gas tank or a propane canister. Oh, totally. Yeah. Yeah, well, we can do that. See, that's an ugly goddamn picture. We can do that. That's how you make a statue, ladies and gentlemen. And that is how it's done. To <laughs> <In> lost arts. <laughs> that is fun. Cool. <laughs> that was perfect. Burning, coming to the ground.